Good afternoon, RVN TV fans. I am Krista Smolda, and we are here with The Midday Show. And today, we have a really great guest. I've gotten to know him a little bit over the past few days, and I cannot wait for our third segment because he's going to do what he does best, and that is a voice talent and artist. His name is Paul Olenek. Paul, are you there? I'm here. And Paul is coming to us from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Did I say that right? You did. You said it perfect. And so you're you're a superstar. Okay, to me, you're a superstar. And, <laughs> and I want to learn a little bit more about you, first of all, yourself, um, just as an individual and your background and how you got to kind of where you are right now. Can you share? Sure, absolutely. I started uh, doing theater in high school for three years. And then I was a bad boy. I skipped my grad. And I went, uh, I flew to New York City to take a chance at uh, a shot at... Uh, television, uh, a television commercial competition out in New York City for the IMTA, Internationally Model, International Model and Talent Association mm -hmm. uh, convention out in New York City, and I actually came in first place to my surprise. Do you remember what the commercial was for? Uh, it was for Central Cadillac. Uh, okay. Now, how long ago was that? That was in 1988, way back when. Okay, so you, so you win this contest, great. Now what happens after that? What happens after that, there was a few agents that were interested in me, but they said that I should probably get an agent out of Toronto, but I didn't want to move to Toronto at the time. I wanted to take some schooling, so I went to the National Institute of Broadcasting and took radio and TV announcing and production as well. Okay, and, and you, then, go ahead. Go you said you, you skipped... The grad. What did you? Th yeah. what? Well, I was supposed to go to my graduation, but I skipped my grad because uh, uh, this was this was too big of an opportunity to go to New York to take a chance. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, I couldn't agree more with that. Okay, so take us. What, what happens next? What happens next? Okay, uh, nineteen. A uh, little ways li later on, uh, nineteen ninety three. I direct my first production professional production called Talk Radio in Winnipeg and it is reviewed and it is uh, highly acclaimed and uh, next thing you know I'm doing uh, uh, audition for the Manitoba Television Network and I did a whole bunch of voices for them and they hired me for a half an hour uh, children's show called Cleaners Inc. about recycling and I did the voiceover of a dog and lo and behold, that series won Best in Canada for a uh, half an hour children's show. And it won, an, uh, won a CanPro Gold for excellence in Canadian broadcasting. Awesome. So it seems like you've kind of broken through in this industry, right? Would you say that? Yeah, and that kind of led me right into the door actually at MTN because they hired me shortly after to be a promotions writer, producer, director as well. And that, that was my foot in the door. And uh, I did that for a good many years. I, I started off at uh, the Manitoba Television Network. And then uh, that was from 95 to 97. And then I helped them launch their other channel out in Calgary, Alberta, that was opening up called A Channel Calgary. And they were opening A Channel Edmonton at the time and A Channel Winnipeg. So I helped coordinate the three markets for all the promotions and wrote and produced and directed the movie trailers and the, the, uh, the television shows, promotions. So would you and in the, in the interim, I was doing, uh, in the interim, I was still doing some voice work and uh, for the creative department. So they'd have me, they'd hire me freelance and I do commercials for them at the same time. Now, would you say, because I know people that try to get in this industry and it's hard. It takes years and years and years and years. Would you say that you broke through rather quickly? Uh, no, I mean, you know, considering 1988 to 1993, it took me a good, what, uh, what, five years to get my foot in the door. Mm -hmm. um, Get, get, you know, just to get my foot into TV and radio. And then after that, uh, I was very fortunate enough that the creative departments would hire me. Um, 
Yeah, so I, I guess I was very blessed. Yeah, yeah. Is this your full-time source of income right now? Well, I'm no longer uh, working for radio or television, but I am doing freelance voice work and talent as well. I have a talent agent out in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Her name is Tracy Waz Wazacha. Oh, geez, I'm going to screw up the name just because I'm a little bit. Uh, Wallace Chuck. Okay. Tracy Wallace Chuck. There we go. I got it. And uh, she's out in, in, in Calgary out here. And uh, I have her. She's from Dark Horse Talent Management. And her phone number is 403 870 2139 if somebody wants to book me for anything. Well, that, yeah, that's good. Now, have you, I'm sure having an agent helps the process along a little bit, but I think when people are getting started in this industry, can you realistically maybe, you know, afford an agent? Maybe someone told you 20 years ago to get an agent and you can't. Did you, did you always <laughs> well, have, the, did you always have an good, agent? The good thing about having an agent is uh, you don't have to pay them up front. If you have a good agent, they just take a cut later on. That's good. They get, they get you work and they get you auditions and stuff and they take a percentage after that. So yeah. there's no upfront fees. So if somebody's going into the industry, they should really uh, take that into consideration because there are a lot of uh, agents out there that will screw you around. Yeah, well that's good advice. That's good to know um, for someone that's been kind of been through it. Um, we are going to take a short commercial break right now, but when we get back, I want to talk about more about what you're coming, uh, what you're doing, what you have upcoming. So stay tuned because we'll be right back with more RVN TV. Ever expect from a Good afternoon and welcome back to the Midday Show. I'm Krista Smolda and we're here with a voice and talent artist, Paul Olenek, and he is coming to us from Canada. Paul, is it cold out there in Canada? Uh, it's not too bad today. It's sunny out here with blue skies, so I'm not going to complain. <laughs> wow, you might be in a better place there than we are here in New Jersey. <laughs> uh, so, so you've told us a little bit about yourself and your background and how you've kind of broken through in the entertainment industry, and congratulations for that. But oh, thanks. going forward, what are your goals? Uh, what's the big daddy? You know, what are you trying to achieve in the industry? Well, I'd like to do some more cartoon voice work, and uh, I would also like to do some more audiobooks as well. I just kind of broke into the audiobook scene while well, within the last 24 hours, to be quite honest with you. I got two book offers, uh, audiobook offers for Amazon. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. So, tell me more about that. So you would just read the book, or are they more like children's books where they're having animated sort of voices? Uh, no, these are just audio books that you find on uh, Amazon Kindle, and uh, the the books that I'm narrating for is uh, one's called The Adventure of Fluffy the Monkey Compendi Compendium by author Philip R. Harrison, which will be released in February. So it's a, a children's book, and it's done in a British accent, okay. and uh, that's going to be sold on Amazon. And the, the big one that I got was uh, a contract with, uh, with author Odessa Gillespie Black. Uh, she does fairy tales with a twist, and she's a very popular author on Amazon. And I'm going to be narrating all of her books as far as I know. Today is your lucky day, Paul. I know. <laughs> and I got one more bit of good news here what? In, regard, in regards to work coming up. Uh, I have an interview later on for a documentary out of Australia. It's called That's Not a Knife. It's an Aussie actor's journey to Hollywood, and it's by the multi-talented creative mind of Sean A. Robinson out in Sydney, Australia. So I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be released this year. Wow, 2018 is your year. <laughs> And you're, and you're on RVN TV today also. That's another one, right? Yeah, that's a plus. I thank you so much for having me. Sure. So, so what does it take for someone to really become a voice talent artist like you? Well, you know, uh, I've been practicing doing imitations and impersonations ever since I was a kid. Uh, just watching the Hollywood stars on the screens mm -hmm. and uh, creating my own voices and persona. And, uh, you know, uh, it takes a lot of work and, 
And, you know, I, I suggest going to a broadcast school to get the basics down, the diaphragmatic breathing and, and so forth and so on, uh, the, the, the vocal techniques. And plus, uh, being not afraid to spend a little money on a home studio uh, to do the voice work from your place because that's how a lot of things are done these days. And like I said, getting a good agent, uh, you know, uh, get a decent agent, shop around, and then uh, create your demo and get yourself out there. Uh, internet is incredible for, uh, like I said, just over the internet, I managed to snag these three jobs in the last 24 hours. That's awesome. And the internet has evolved us so much and not just in this industry, but in other ways. So, you know, go back even, I don't know, maybe 20 years. It wasn't, it, it wasn't really as available to us to utilize, correct? Right. It's not as, it's now you can send your VOs out via email and uh, it's so much easier. You don't have to actually physically come down to the, the place and, and you can get direction from people online, whether it be on Skype or uh, FaceTime or whatever. Yeah. So it, it makes it so much easier. And, and so the, the voice talent, you said you've been doing this since you're a little kid, and I'm sure that's the case with most people that do what you do. They, they, they've done it as a kid. But you said that coaching really does help, right? Oh, absolutely. I, I would never, you know, I, I'm so happy that I took the course at the uh, – National Institute of Broadcasting because that made a difference. Absolutely. That made a difference. And uh, I also did a little bit of radio after television for a few years as well. Now, do you like radio or television better? Uh, I love the medium of uh, radio. I like the old radio plays, you know, yep. the shadow nose and stuff yep. like that. Yeah, <laughs> but you've got to keep yourself relevant too. So if radio, you know, I don't know if radio is a, a dying breed, you know, I just, there's less and less radio, maybe more online, right. more streaming TV. You got to keep yourself relevant and stay. In yeah, you got to, you got to keep yourself versatile, be able to do a little bit of everything, a little bit of radio, a little bit of TV, a little bit of film. Yeah. So other than the things that you said, like, are there any other projects or potential things that you're working on at the moment? Yeah, there's there's also, I'm um, just waiting to hear on when I'm going to be on the set as an extra for Prime's TV series, uh, Ten Star Season 2, which is being filmed here in Calgary. It features the actor uh, Eli Roth from the Hateful Eight, Pulp Fiction, and Reservoir Dog fame. Oh, cool. So when will, yeah, you, when so will you find out about that? So that's, they're shooting that in February, and I went down for an a audition, and they sized me up, and they said, we'll see you on the set. So I'm just waiting to hear the call now. Oh, cool. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little thing right here. I'm just breathing, <laughs> and I'm sending energy through the, through the internet. Over through the internet, you. absolutely. <laughs> yes, because you're going to get that call any day now. I know it. And yeah. we're going to have the opportunity to hear you, what you do best, which is impersonations. Right after this commercial break, are you ready to do all of those 20 or so that I have here for you? Absolutely. Fabulous. <laughs> all right. Stay tuned. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Midday Show. And guess what? It's not just me anymore. Krista Smolda. I'm joined by Dana Carney. Hello. <laughs> and we have Paul Olenek all the way out in, Ca in uh, Canada. And he is a voice and talent artist. And so before we get into the best part of this segment, which is him doing awesome impersonations, I just want to ask you about IMDb, which is, uh, you know, what is IMDb? Why don't you do it, Justin? It's, it's the uh, Internet Movie Database, and uh, basically all actors in the world are basically on there. Um, it's, a, it's a great resource. Um, I just stumbled across it when I... Uh, when I did a gig out in uh, Seattle last year, um, they put my name down for an I IMDb credit. So what happens then, my name shows up, and I sign, sign up, and uh, I get an account. And uh, if I want to add some more things to it, uh, there's a minimal charge each month. But you can put your headshot up, and it's, uh, it's well worth the investment. And uh, as, as, you, as your career uh, uh, flourishes, you can put more and more credits down on there, right? And pictures and stuff, and and you can get in contact with uh, a lot of other actors in the world. 
So you've got to have some credentials to start to get onto that community, yeah, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you do. Okay. And then from that point, it just kind of can get bigger and bigger. And it really is cool because we have a lot of people that come in from that community here, which are just people that are kind of trying to break through. And so if you have right. credentials, you should be getting on there if you're not, instead of just, you know, knocking doors or doing it some other way. But if you right. haven't, if you have an agent, I'm sure they all know all about that. But that's how, uh, that's how I found you. So, right. All right. So we're going to get into it. Yes. All right. So Dana is going to ask you to do your top five. Take it over, Dana. All right, so Christopher Lloyd, Jack Nicholson, Mick, right? Nick, geez, Rick Moranis, <laughs> Yoda, and John Travolta as Vinny Barbarino. All right, All right. So, where do you want me to start? Which one? Christopher Lloyd. Einstein hit the time circuits on the new DeLorean. It's a long story, Marty. We've got to go <laughs> back to the future, future boy. I love the eyebrows. He raises the eyebrows, too. I know, I love it. <laughs> Jack Nicholson. Jack, Jack is dead. You can call me Joker. And as you can see, I'm a lot happier now. <laughs> <laughs> John Travolta as Vinny Bavarino. I'll spend hours on my hair and you mess with why I, I'm a bit queasy. <laughs> why, why are you doing it to me, Dana? Why? <laughs> okay, that was really good because I one. know him. <laughs> uh, Rick Moranis. I can get salmon for $16.99 a pound. That's good financial sense. Okay, who brought the dog? <laughs> Yoda. Hmm, you said Yoda. <laughs> Judge me by my size, do you? But well, you should not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, now this is kind of a weird one. I know this, I, I was supposed to do the top five, but it's my birthday tomorrow. Can you do something maybe like in Kermit the Frog's voice for me and say happy birthday, Dana? Okay. Hi, home, Kermit the Frog here with our special guest, Miss Dana Carney. It's her birthday, yay! I love it. Thank you so much. Oh, that was it awesome. Brings me, it brings me back. That was great. Yes. Go ahead. You got the list. Are you about to oh, yeah, list? so we can continue doing more. Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo. Raggy, <laughs> Uncle Scoop. Oh, that's good. Oh my gosh, Cameron from uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Rooney, pardon my French, but you're a chicken meister. Wow, that's really that good. That's good. Yeah. How about Scrappy Doo? Let me in, him, Uncle Scoop. I'll split him. Oh, that was perfect. Johnny Carson. I did not know that. That is some wild and wacky stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Michael J. Fox. Doc, you gotta check this out, Doc. <laughs> Martin Short. Martin Short. Okay, just give me a second here. Hang on one sec. Uh, <laughs> He's the guy. Um... SCTV. Yes, yes. It started with a C, a bouncy C, a roly poly <laughs> wow. C. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. How about Jimmy Stewart? Bert, Bert, you know me, Bedford Falls. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I hear that you can do Santa Claus, though. Is that correct? Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I'm working on one right now. This one's just for you, Dana. All for right. For your birthday. Oh, thank you. It is Gru from Despicable Me. Oh. Go ahead. I'm looking for a little girl named Dana. It's her birthday. <laughs> That's good. Bye. Kids are going to love that. They love that movie. That sounded so great. Thank How you. How about Bugs Bunny? Yes. Yeah, what's up, Doc? <laughs> Carrots are for a dime, but it doesn't for a dime. It's magic. Oh, that's good. That was real. That was great. That was great. Do you yeah. have a favorite one? Yeah. Do you have a favorite one, Dana? So far, the Kermit the Frog of was course. my favorite. And, and you know, I actually it's tied with Gru. Okay. <laughs> uh, my favorite well, was. Scooby Doo. Mm -hmm. Can you do it I again? Love Can you do it again, please? Raggy, Uncle Scoop. <laughs> oh my God, that's. Perfect. But do you see his eyebrow when he does that, though? Do it, I didn't see it. Do you it, watch, do watch his again. eyebrow. Go ahead. Go ahead, one more time. Raggy, <laughs> where are you, Uncle Scoop? <laughs> So I don't, do you know that your one eyebrow just goes up real high? I uh, know I don't know that. <laughs> okay, that's a talent. Yes, that's yes, a talent right. of itself. Yeah. Do you know any impressions? People are like, what is she? Do you know any impressions, Dana? No. How about you? 
Well, I got Droopy Dog. Do you know Droopy Dog, Paul? Yeah, I know Droopy Dog. Yeah, okay. sure. Are you ready? Tell me how this sounds. Ready? Oh, okay. Give me your best shot. Okay. That makes me very mad. Wow. Was that good? Oh my goodness. That's great. That's great. Can you do Pee Wee Herman? No, I can't do Pee Wee Herman. You got to do it for me. All right, so that was just a little talent that I had to just let out oh there. Oh my gosh, I love that. So, Paul, That's fabulous. Paul, it was wonderful for to have you on the show. You, if you did some amazing uh, entertainment for us, I love to laugh, and so oh yeah, as long as you're making people laugh, man, you are doing a great thing. Do you have anything? Well, do you have anything else you want to add? Like we want people to know where they can mm -hmm. uh, find you and connect with you and. Hire sure, you. absolutely. Uh, they can connect with me on Facebook at Paul Olenek, uh, O L E Y N I C K, or uh, they can uh, they can connect with me on IMDb as well. Mm -hmm. And you can look me up on either one of those. And if you want to get in contact with me to do some work or something, you can contact my agent Tracy Wallace Chuck. At Dark Horse Talent Management, hey, I said it right this time. Uh, her number is 403-870-2139. Thank you so much, Paul, Thank for you. joining us. We had a great time. Thank you for making us laugh. And I suggest that you hire Paul immediately if you have a need for any of his services. And to say happy birthday to you. Exactly. Yeah, and happy birthday, Dana. Thank you so much. All right, stay, stay tuned because we'll be back with more Midday here on RBN TV. See you soon.